Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 44 of the year 2020 appointing Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, personal secretary to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa with the rank, rank of Undersecretary. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 17 of the year 2020, amending the first clause of Decree Law 40 of the year 1999 on the GCC National's ownership of constructed properties and land plots in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Following its endorsement by the Shura Council and Council of Representatives, His Majesty the King also ratified and issued Law 18 of the year 2020, endorsing the air, air service agreement between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Spain. Following its endorsement by the Shura Council and Council of Representatives, the deal was signed by the two countries at the headquarters of the International Civil Aviation Organization, the ICAO, in Montreal on the 25th of September 2019. His Majesty also ratified and issued Law 19 of the year 2020 endorsing the protocol amending the agreement between the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the government of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan on avoiding double taxation and preventing physical evasion in relation to income taxes following its endorsement by the Shura Council and Council of Representatives. The protocol attached to this law was signed by the two countries in Islamabad on the 8th of April 2019. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired the meeting of the Supreme Defense Council at Sukhir Palace. Verses from the Holy Quran were recited, then His Majesty the King delivered. <laughs> إليهم على سواء إن الله لا يحب الخائنين ولا يحسبن الذين كفروا سبقوا إنهم لا يعجزون وَأَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَمِنْ رِبَاطِ الْخَيْلِ تُرْهِبُونَ بِهِ عَدُوَّ اللَّهِ وَعَدُوَّكُمْ تُرْهِبُونَ بِهِ عَدُوَّ اللَّهِ وَعَدُوَّكُمْ وَآخَرِينَ مِنْ دُونِهِمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَهُمْ اللَّهُ يَعْلَمُهُمْ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ وَإِنْ جَنَحُوا لِلسَّلْمِ فَاجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إنه هو السميع العليم صدق الله العظيم 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يسرنا أن نفتتح اجتماعنا الثاني لمجلس الدفاع الأعلى لهذا العام متوجهين لكم جميعا بالشكر والتقدير على جهودكم المتميزة في السهر على أمن الوطن وأمان المواطن والمقيم ومتابعة كل ما يلزم للحفاظ على سير الحياة ودوران عجلة التطوير والبناء الوطني وأنها لفرصة طيبة نشيد فيها بمبادرة صاحب السمو الملكي العم العزيز الأمير خليفة بن سلمان آل خليفة رئيس الوزراء الموقر وبقرار مجلس الوزراء باعتماد يوما للطبيب البحريني في أول أربعاء من شهر نوفمبر من كل عام مع تخصيص جائزة باسم سموه لتكريم الأطباء البحرينيين المتميزين في مجالات البحث العلمي والطبي وتواصل مملكة البحرين بتسخير كل أمكانياتها في ظل هذه الظروف الاستثنائية للأزمة الصحية الطارئة التي يشكل انتشارها على المستوى العالمي تحديا مستمرا وتهدد آثارها فرص التنمية الشاملة وخصوصا المكتسبات الاقتصادية الاجتماعية ومن هنا جاءت حزمة السياسات والقرارات والإجراءات المالية والاقتصادية التي وجهنا بها مبكرا لاحتواء تداعيات الظرف وباشر فريق البحرين الوطني بقيادة صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد الأمين على متابعة تنفيذ برامجها بدقة وفعالية بهدف الحفاظ على مستويات النمو الاقتصادي لصالح الوطن وأبنائه الكرام ولقد أبدت سلطات الدولة وجميع مؤسساتها قدرتها الرفيعة وجاهزيتها العالية في تحمل مسؤوليتها خلال هذه الفترة الصعبة ولدورهم هذا الأثر الكبير في انضباط العمل وتميز نتائجه وفي مقدمة تلك الجهود الوطنية ما يتولاه ابننا العزيز صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة حفظه الله من أدوار ريادية لن تنساها البحرين متمثلة في مواقفه الجليلة ومساعيه المخلصة في حمل مسؤولياته الوطنية على الوجه الأكمل في الشدة والرخاء كما نخص بالذكر العمل الكبير والمقدر الذي تقوم به مؤسساتنا العسكرية والأمنية ممثلة في قوة دفاع البحرين المتميزة بتنظيمها العسكري والطبي والإداري العريق ووزارة الداخلية بكوادرها المتأهبة على الصفوف الأمامية وقوات الحرس الوطني والأمن الوطني بتقديمهم كافة ما يلزم للتصدي لهذا الفيروس للحفاظ على صحة وسلامة وأمن المواطنين والمقيمين ووفق أعلى المستويات مجددين بهذه المناسبة شكرنا وامتنان العميق لمساعي الفرق الطبية والكوادر الصحية والطواقم المدنية الذين يعملون بعزم الأقوياء وبهمة الأوفياء ويواصلون في تحمل مسؤولياتهم الإنسانية في حماية الأرواح 
وبتطبيق أفضل الخدمات والعلاجات والتدابير الوقائية مما أكسب مملكة البحرين سمعة عالمية متقدمة في مجال مكافحة هذه الجائحة وبسواعد أبنائنا نفخر وسنحقق النجاح بإذنه تعالى وبالعودة إلى ما بدأنا به أكرر الشكر والتقدير الذي لن يكفي ولن يفي حق شعبنا الوفي الفخورين بمعدنه الأصيل وبخلقه الرفيع والتزامه المتحضر في كافة الظروف والأوقات ونشير هنا إلى ما تشكلها المسؤولية الفردية والمجتمعية المشتركة من أهمية قصوى للتقلب على هذه الجائحة وهو أمر ليس بجديد على البحرين فأهلها الأعزاء هم أهل للشدائد وبعونهم سنتقلب على كل الصعاب بحول الله وقوته وفي الختام ندعو المولى عز وجل أن يشفي مرضانا ويرحم شهدائنا في ظل هذه الجائحة الذين يحسبون في مرتبة الشهداء بإذنه تعالى مستذكرين هنا شهداء الواجب ممن ضحوا بأرواحهم الزكية من أجل الحفاظ على أمن البحرين وستظل تضحياتهم محفورة في ذاكرة الوطن فهم مصدر إلهامنا وفخرنا ونسأل الله أن يديم على البحرين الغالية نعمه الكثيرة من أمن وأمان ورفعة ورقاء والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته لله الحمد مثل ما تفضلتم هذا الشعب شعبكم يستاهل منكم كل ما أعطي ووفر له من صحة ومن تعليم ومن أمن وأمان فالله يوفقنا إن شاء الله جميع لخدمتكم في هذا الوقت المهم اللي يجب أن نعمل جد وجهد منا كلنا لتنفيذ توجيهاتكم وشكرا طالما شكرا شكرا Then the Supreme Defense Council discussed the topics listed on its agenda and took the necessary decisions regarding them. The National Security Advisor and Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, briefed the Council on topics aimed at increasing the health, security, and defense capabilities. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Justin Sabral. He reviewed with him the deep rooted bilateral relations and growing cooperation between the two friendly countries. His Majesty praised historical relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the USA, stressing growing cooperation in various fields. He underlined the Kingdom's keenness to boost bilateral ties and serve common interests, lauding the pivotal role of the U.S. administration on the international scene, as well as its efforts to promote regional and global peace and security. As a tribute for his efforts in enhancing relations between the two friendly countries, His Majesty the King bestowed on the U.S. Ambassador the Order of Bahrain First Class. The U.S. Ambassador expressed heartfelt thanks and respect to His Majesty the King for the order, lauding His Majesty's role in continuous support to consolidating bilateral relations and distinguished partnership between the two friendly countries. America in all fields. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will award His Excellency the Order of Bahrain First Class in appreciation of his great efforts and contributions.
Ms. Mashti King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa deputized as representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs national security advisor and president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to attend the Irfa Views International School's RVIS's fifth graduation ceremony, which was held under the patronage of His Majesty the King. The ceremony celebrating 28 graduates was attended by RVIS Board of Trustees, administration and faculty members as well well as families and friends of the graduates. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasr expressed pride at attending the ceremony representing His Majesty the King, who has always been keen to support the educational movement in Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Nasr noted that His Majesty the King's directives to provide the best environment for students to continue studying in the current extraordinary circumstances reflects His Majesty's concern for the success of all students. His Highness congratulated the graduates, pointing out that holding this graduation ceremony wouldn't have been possible without the great efforts of the students in the current exceptional conditions. He added that the next step of these students' lives is very important to continue their academic journey, highlighting the importance of making the right decision for selecting their college major. Furthermore, His Highness Sheikh Nasser valued the efforts of RVIS's Board of Trustees towards enriching Bahrain's educational field. The graduation ceremony began with the graduates marching to the national anthem and graduate Ahmed bin Salman bin Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa reciting verses from the Holy Quran. Head of the school, Tara Woodby, delivered an opening speech followed by Heather Minan, who spoke on behalf of RVIS faculty. RVIS Secondary School Principal Danielle Pinkerton then handed the awards of merit to the outstanding graduates and the RVIS Honor Cords the two eligible students. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, held a meeting remotely chaired by the SCIA's chairman, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, in the presence of all its members with the Supreme Council for Health, the SCH president and chairman of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al 
Khalifa, the chairman of the Sunni Endowments Council, Dr. Rashid bin Muhammad Al-Hajri, and the chairman of the Ja'fari Endowments Council, Yusuf bin Saleh Al-Saleh. The latest developments concerning the coronavirus on the local and international levels will discuss, and will as, as well as the hosting of a communal worship practices in the kingdom. The council was briefed by the SCH president on the pandemic and the statistics in the country, as well as the recommendations of the medical authorities concerned on these matters. The council was also briefed by the Minister of Justice and the Chairman of the Sunni and Jafari Endowment Councils on the precautionary measures and preparations on this regard. Based on these recommendations and the keenness on maintaining the health and safety of the people and in support of the efforts of the National Task Force on combating the coronavirus, the council decided unanimously to continue the suspension of communal practices of worship as well as all other gatherings in light of the spread of the coronavirus. The council reiterated the importance of careful consideration regarding the reopening of mosques and houses of worship based on the recommendations of the medical authorities concerned. The decision will be resetted every two weeks based on the kingdom's health indicators. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the STIA, held its ordinary session remotely chaired by the STIA's chairman, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The council hailed the appreciation and pride the efforts of Bahraini doctors in maintaining the safety and health of the community and their role in achieving social security in the kingdom, as well as their countless contributions in the comprehensive project of development in the country under the leadership of His Majesty the King. The council hailed the government's dedication on the first Wednesday of November of each year as Bahraini Doctors Day and the allocation of an award under the name of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to honor distinguished Bahraini doctors in the field of treatment and medical research and appreciation of their efforts. The Council then hold the decision of Saudi Arabia or hailed the decision of Saudi Arabia in limiting the number of pilgrims for this year's Hajj season to those who wish to perform the pilgrimage who are currently in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This decision was based on the keenness of the government of the custodian of the two holy mosques on holding the Hajj season in a safe environment to protect all people against the coronavirus pandemic. The council noted that this decision reflects the keenness of the kingdom under the leadership of the Saudi monarch King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud and the crown prince Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud to maintain the health and safety of pilgrims while holding this sacred season. The council noted that this reflects the kingdom's commitment to supporting global efforts and the international health organizations in containing the spread of the virus. The Minister of Labor and, Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, participated in the regional summit held remotely and organized by the International Labor Organization on the Corona pandemic in the world of labor and Arab, in Arab countries. With the participation of a number of labor ministers in the member states or countries and representatives of the Chambers of Commerce, Hamidan reviewed the steps taken by Bahrain to confront the negative effects of the coronavirus, stating that in accordance with the royal directives of His Majesty the King and in follow-up on government decisions led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the orders of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a financial and economic uh, stimulus package worth $4.3 billion was launched. The Minister of Labor noted that all the initiatives taken by the government were aimed at alleviating the economic repercussions on institutions and individuals and maintaining the stability and sustainability of the labor market. Upon the directives of the Commander of Royal Medical Services and Deputy Chairman of the National Medical Team to combat the coronavirus, Major General Professor Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, and an implementation of the instructions issued by the BDF General Command, the military hospital continues to take all precautionary and preventative measures to limit the spread of the coronavirus to ensure the safety of patients and hospital staff. As mobile isolation rooms were provided equipped with the latest modern technology to isolate suspected cases, the military 
Cancer Hospital is the first in Bahrain to provide such mobile rooms and also contributed to supplying them to other hospitals. Mobile isolation rooms are characterized by negative pressure and filters for ultraviolet light, which contribute to the elimination of the DNA of bacteria and viruses. The mobile room is also distinguished by a number of isolated carriers, which are small portable isolation devices with their own negative pressure filter used to isolate and transfer active cases without exposing others in the hospital to the virus. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health and member of the National Medical Team to Combat the Coronavirus, Dr. Walid Khalifa al mana affirmed uh, that the national efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Bin Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, will continue to maintain the health and safety of citizens and residents in the kingdom. He noted that everyone's commitment to precautionary and preventative measures is the essential complement to the efforts, decisions and recommendations and an important pillar for the success of all plans. Almana stated that commitment to decisions, precautionary and preventative measures is a national duty of every individual in order to protect himself, his family and his community and to preserve public safety. He added that the decision to reduce uh, the period of precautionary home quarantine from 14 days to 10 days for travelers and contacts came after a through a thorough study by the national medical team to combat the coronavirus shared by the president of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The leadership of the Kingdom of Bahrain of the World Customs Organization, the WCO, for the 135th and 136th term received wide international welcome after the appointment of President of Customs of the Kingdom of Bahrain, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as WCO Deputy President. Sheikh Ahmed shared the WCO virtual meeting in which he thanked the organization for their support and affirmed the importance of upgrading the legislations and customs work strategies to regulate uh, to regulate commerce among countries. He also stressed the importance to enhance the quality of customs work, hence ensuring the safety of commercial trade and the security of public health. Also during the meeting, Sheikh Ahmed highlighted the sacrifices of customs staff during the current health situation due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which resulted in the death of many customs staff on the job. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has welcomed the report of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, on Iran before the Security Council in which he held Iran accountable for the terrorist acts that targeted two Aramco facilities in Abgig and uh, Hijrat Khres in Saudi Arabia and for targeting Abha International Airport last year with cruise missiles and drones. The ministry uh, commended the professionalities or professionalism and high transparency of the report based on uh, irrefutable facts and that has demonstrated the grave destructive role of Iran to undermine security and stability in the region by supporting, financing, arming and training terrorist organizations and continuing to support the Houthi terrorist group that threatens civilians in Saudi Arabia, which reflects the Iranian determination to destabilize the region. The ministry affirmed that Bahrain stands in line with Saudi Arabia and supports all the measures it takes to confront aggressive Iranian actions to protect its security and stability. It also stressed the need for the international community and the Security Council to take firm steps to deter and confront Iran and extend the arms embargo imposed on it until Tehran changes its aggressive approach that violates all international conventions and laws and threatens regional peace and security. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,340 with 403 recoveries, 519 registered new cases and six deaths. The decrees or the deceased were a 60-year-old male expatriate, an 88-year-old female citizen, an 88-year-old male citizen, a 66-year-old male expatriate and a 62-year-old male citizen as well as a 67-year-old male citizen. The Ministry of Health expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact, moreover covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible.